From the heart of the American Southwest, the Ruger Girls With Guns Rendezvous is a place where strength meets style and empowerment is achieved through training at the renowned Gunsight facility. Join us ladies clad in the latest Girls With Guns clothing as we embark on a journey of achieving higher levels of skill and hone in on our marksmanship ability with elite firearms instructor, Illing Nu. But it's not just about hitting the target. It's about breaking barriers, embracing the freedom and responsibility that comes with self-defense and a sisterhood forged in the process. And in an exciting update, stay tuned. I have some big news and changes happening in the picturesque landscapes of Wyoming. You guys, I'm so stoked. I just got the call that our property closed in Wyoming. And Yogi is hunting beaver in Sweden right now, so I'm gonna FaceTime him. Guess what, husband? <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. We are officially uh, pasture owners in Wyoming. That's awesome. I know, it's so awesome, I'm super happy. Um, I gotta get dressed, because we are heading to the Ruger factory like right now. Um, but I just wanted to give you the good news because I am so excited. Awesome. Okay, good luck to you on your pigs. I love Thank you. you. Three years ago, I started meeting with one of my friends, Jane Ann, here at Gunsight, and we talked about doing a media event that would encompass Girls With Guns clothing and our new line, Concealed Casual, and really be able to take women and show them what we have to offer, and not only what we have to offer, but have some amazing training with it at Gunsight. We've called it GWG's Ruger Rendezvous. Ruger has provided us with amazing Max 9 handguns, which we are so excited to have. Basically six inches long, nine and a half inches wide, 3.2 inch barrel. Um, kind of fits that high capacity small package, but we really worked on designing this gun to be very ergonomic and very shootable for its size. We're able to tour the Ruger factory and see what all of these hardworking Americans are putting together for us in the firearms industry. With the tour comes a unique perspective into the 75 year tradition of firearms innovation and manufacturing for responsible citizens. It's an opportunity to appreciate the heritage and legacy of a company deeply rooted in the American firearms culture and a firsthand view of the intersection of tradition and innovation in firearms manufacturing. A glimpse into how time-honored craftsmanship has been combined with cutting edge technology. Here, it is evident that there is an appreciation of the integral role firearms occupy in our society, as well as the dedication to those who work tirelessly to ensure that each firearm meets the highest standards of safety and reliability. Events like this allow us to talk to these women and get their feedback from people who are in the industry. We have competitive shooters. We have women who are new shooters here. So it is a variety of different um, shapes, sizes, bodies, and also training levels. 
Pursue the Wild is brought to you by Ruger and Marlin Firearms. This segment is brought to you by Night Force Optics. Rugged, reliable, repeatable. And On X Hunt. Know where you stand. I'm Jen O'Hara. Welcome to GWG's Ruger Rendezvous. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go join these ladies on the line and get to training. I can't wait, this is the best part. Now, let's talk about stance a little bit, okay? So I told you this morning about a good fighting stance. For me, minimum armpit width apart because I'm small. And so I wanna have as much kind of, you know, low center of gravity as possible so somebody doesn't just come and pick me up and throw me aside. So I tend to get very wide. Illing New is our range master and Illing and myself and Narissa have been friends for over 20 years. I am so honored of the fact that she has taken all of our Girls With Guns and Concealed Casual product and put it down to a science. How do we draw safely? When we're working in the leggings, what is the best scenario when you're out on the line in order to make sure that the women can reholster safely? What we're doing here is learning where our trigger reset point is, what it feels like, what it sounds like if you can hear it. Every trigger is different. During this weekend, we have women that are here with all different shooting backgrounds. Some have never handled a pistol, some have a lot of experience and are, are instructors themselves. So with that said, we're taking things back to the super basic fundamentals of marksmanship. We're taking it down to the basic techniques in drawing so we can make sure everybody's really comfortable with the firearm and this makes it very fun for everybody to learn and grow together as we develop and build on those existing fundamentals or for a lot of these ladies new fundamentals grip clear rotate okay and relay two please check that your firearms are unloaded extract the magazine lock the slide back check the chamber I um, never shot any guns when I was a kid growing up grew up in the suburbs of the San Francisco Bay Area not exactly gun friendly country but uh, I almost was the victim of a home invasion, and so I started shooting for self-defense. I got my first gun when I was in my early 30s and started practicing at the range, found out I was a good shot, and I loved it, and I loved the competitive aspect of it. But mainly my reason for getting involved with shooting was self-defense. And when I learned about gun sight, I started coming to gun sight. I've probably been here 20, 25 times over, over the last 35 years and it's a great place to come and practice your self-defense skills. We are about to go um, for our first live fire experience of the day, um, of the weekend I should say. So all of the ladies are jamming up a couple of magazines. We're going to only shoot um, eight rounds per lady right now. Grip, remember, final firing grip. That's the point here, final firing grip. Clear, the objective here is to clear my holster so that I can get this thing out and towards target. Rotate, the objective here is to get the muzzle oriented towards my target. The fifth step we call look, because essentially you're still looking at your aiming point. You continue to look, 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 look as you push the sights into that, that line of sight so that your sights are now superimposed on your aiming point or right underneath. Rotate, push to a ready position, a ready position. Finger goes straight, you're going out to just beneath the paper of that target. Round one, uh, I'm, I'm making a nice little rat's nest, which is great because my fundamentals are, 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 are looking very solid, but it also makes me very slow. <laughs> Two rounds, good follow through on every single shot. Two rounds, stand by, fire.
So we're at the end of day one and we just went to the seven yard line doing some double taps, really just focusing on our front sight. And you can tell that some of the shots start getting a little bit further out than when we were at the five, five yard line, but that's what to expect. And I really feel like I watched everyone today grow and learn something. And it's such an incredible opportunity with this wonderful lady. Come on, we've been talking all day. wrap on day one here um, all in all it was an absolutely successful day and it accomplished exactly what this day was intended to do so for those ladies that are advanced shooters and or instructors they really got to watch Eileen run a classroom through the most novice and basic of steps keeping everybody in line keeping the class moving at the same flow to avoid confusion and as an instructor, it was a really great resource to gain extra information to become a better instructor. For those new students, it served as a really safe and comfortable learning environment for them to gain the confidence in these new skills that they need to be comfortably executing the fundamentals of marksmanship, being accurate on target, and getting exactly what they need out of this class, which is to have a positive experience shooting a great firearm. Once you get to a certain level, when we're talking about self-defense, okay, this is not necessarily the best outcome. Because if she's shooting this well, then she can probably be more efficient. I hate to use the word speed up or shoot faster or what have you, because when the people say that to me, it always makes me mess up. But be more efficient. One of the things that Yaling is talking about that always strikes home to me is, you know, she's able to evaluate each shooter and what fundamental errors they're making. And for me personally is, I tend to try to be too perfect. And like she called out in this particular class is that, you know, whether my whole uh, uh, target zone is this big or if it's a vital area, the hit is worth the same amount of points. And what I tend to have a propensity to do is try to aim for this amount of perfection and it makes me extremely slow. And I get out there and I'm focusing on the front side and I'm just camping on that trigger, trying to make that perfect press. And so I'm really gonna try to challenge myself for the next day and a half to step up my speed and try to really balance that speed and accuracy to where I'm drawing, I'm practicing with my equipment and I'm able to get those uh, vital hits off more quickly um, or more rapidly and without diminishing my accuracy. As an instructor, actually, I think this class was really, really important for me to learn just different levels of comfortability around firearms. And then a lot of the women that own, you know, a lot of these girls with guns clothing really don't know the versatility of them. So I think it was really surprising that a lot of things are ambidextrous. You can use different holsters with the products, which was really cool. And again, there's just so many ways to make it work for you. So that was my big takeaway is we're all different, different sizes, different heights, you know, we're carrying different guns or, or what have you, but it's been really cool to learn about that and then how you can integrate comfortable clothing as well into your everyday life and I think that's a big thing as well because we do like to be comfortable and the last thing I'll add to that too is even at home um, I carry at home I work from home and a lot of women had that aha moment of like oh I should have a gun on me why not do it in leggings and the tomboy sweatshirt like how comfortable you want to be so it you can make it work for you no matter what and always have a gun on you fire fantastic this is the end of our shooting you guys are amazing. I cannot believe how far we've come from morning one to afternoon three. It is incredible. You guys are drawing. You're like greased lightning coming out of those concealment holsters and you are shooting against each other. So there's a little bit of pressure and stress. You're shooting with turning targets, a little bit more stress and pressure. You're doing a fantastic job. Everybody was safe. We didn't have a single safety issue. So this was a really unique experience for me. I've had a lot of classic 
pistol training. However, I haven't had the opportunity to get out on the range, especially with live fire, and experiment with clothing specifically made for concealed carry, like the products that we're using now with Girls With Guns clothing. So this was a great experience, and of course, the instructors here at Gunsight are second to none and just to have them with me and using the modular holster from crossbreed holsters as well as the sticky holster it's it's been really eye-opening and it'll help me a lot not only in my everyday carry but also in helping other women on their journey to conceal carry every day pursue the wild is brought to you by ruger and marlin firearms this segment is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Tinks, America's number one buck lure, and dead downwind. Real science, real results. Returning home to Wyoming, I can't help but feel the thrill in envisioning the potential of the property. As I dream of what the future holds, budgets are established and timelines are set. We're out here at the property, and as you can see, we have one giant machine there. We're gonna start putting in some roads, flatten out this area for the shoot house and the round crawl for the girls. Each accomplishment marks a milestone reached and is a testament to the hard work and perseverance that goes into bringing my vision to life. We want to bring the mules out here tomorrow, but we have to fix this fence where in this low spot here, it's lifted. Developing a property is an ever evolving landscape and the process is a continuous flow of tasks and challenges that must be met with hard work. It's mule moving day and it's pouring down rain. the truck and trailer in the driveway. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> We're not going anywhere else. In these early stages, I'm beyond thankful to simply provide a wonderful home to my horse and mules. Seeing them live freely, galloping across the wild landscape brings my heart pure joy and happiness. This is our home. Days are filled with overseeing the various projects that are underway, which includes moving my shoot house from Oregon, followed by gravel for the roads, drinking water, and power. Through it all, it's about recognizing that the work may seem never ending, but it's also endlessly rewarding to call this place home. All right, you guys, we have been super busy getting settled in here in Wyoming at our new house. And I brought all the way from Oregon, my shoot house. Now this is like my gun love dream come true because it keeps me dry when it's raining, out of the wind, out of the sun. My shoot house is my favorite thing, which is why it made the 15 hour drive from Oregon to Wyoming. I got my tank trap out here, my barricades, all the fun props to kind of do some positional shooting and training. I have been burning down this range. My friends from Girls With Guns have been here. It's been a ton of fun and I love having my own space to shoot right here at home and that's what makes it so special being able to live in a place like Wyoming. I wanna roll out the red carpet and give you guys a private tour of my shoot house. Now please know that everything is a work in progress including this door. <laughs> <laughs> With time, everything will get better, <laughs> but come on inside. All right, so when you walk in, you guys, I have this glorious like living room set up here to where you can take off your shoes, rest your guns right here, um, kind of stage up your gear, have a cold drink, whatever, eat lunch. So this is like kind of like the living area space. Then we go into like more of my active work zone. So I've got a table here where we can stage up gear, place mags, holsters, range bags, whatever, kind of make a gear bomb. It's also where Frankie and Kruger sometimes lay when they're out here doing work with me. Um, I even got a min fridge. 
right? So I can put my lunch in here, my water, keep everything cool because it gets super hot here in Wyoming in the summertime. So a nice cold water and good lunch is super nice. Um, and then I go into like more of this active work zone. Um, I've got my locker that just has eyes, ears, range bags, Kestrels, work gear, and um, my shooting bench. And the cool thing about this whole setup is it's totally mobile. I can uh, pick this shoot house up and move it anywhere on my property if I want to. Now, mind you, it's not super easy to move, but it is mobile. So I love that factor that I have this place to shoot out of the rain, out of the wind, out of the sun at times. Um, it's been super great for me because it goes with me everywhere I go. Um, so I just pop up these doors. And uh, it reveals my gun range. Thank you for watching this episode of Pursue the Wild. Jump behind the scenes with us for our podcast, Wild and Uncut or tune into our digital lifestyle show, Our Wild Life. You can stream everything on my website, pursuethewild.com, and be sure to follow me on social media, at Christy Titus.